Podcast. Thanks for walking on the way over here. Good lord, oh my god. <laughs> my yearly cardio going over here. Jeez. So out of shape. And they get like a um, bow flex or something, huh? <laughs> but thank you guys for being here. You guys look great. So many good cosplays I'm seeing in here. See a lot of uh, see a lot of uh, lot of keys. You see a lot of pidges. See a couple of sheroes. <laughs> There's probably some adventure out there, maybe yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, okay, come on, come on, come on, you guys. Sweet, well, thank you guys for coming out. Uh, we're, because they scheduled some stuff a little bit weirdly today, we're gonna only be here for about 30 minutes. It's gonna be a fast panel. However, it's gonna be a great panel. So, sometimes faster is more furious and more fun. Um, and yeah, it's very new. You guys are already lined up for questions, it's great. So I don't have to do any other spiel about telling you to line up because you're right there. Uh, so yeah, let's get right down to it. First and foremost, this lovely, lovely person in a shark outfit. Love you, you look great. Thank Good you. to see you again, by the way. Oh, yeah. um, my question is, if you could make an episode of Ultron, what would it be? Uh, if I could make an episode of Ultron, it would be a musical. <laughs> it has some stickers? So many gifts, oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So sweet. Hello. Little light stickers. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I love your hair. Your hair's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lance is my favorite character. Probably you probably hear that. Oh my gosh, you too. <laughs> Okay. So, um, how do you feel about Mantis' emotional journey through from mm -hmm. season one to seven, especially since uh, I saw this meme where it's like, in the beginning, it's like uh, Keith is like, every someone's gonna die, and Mantis like, oh fun, and now it's reversed. Where Keith is, and Mantis is like, someone's gonna die, and Keith is, oh fun. So oh. it reversed it now. So how do you feel about uh, his? I love it. Yeah, I think I mean it's great. I think any any character that has a great character growth like that is fun to play as an actor, and it's just and it's just a good character in general. Um, if someone, I guess, at least when one of your main characters, if they're not like, if they don't have some change throughout the show, if there's not some lesson they're learning or something that's building about them, then it's not really like a, I mean, there's no character arc there, obviously. And so I think every character does, but I think Lance is one of the most interesting. Because I think he starts out as probably being one of the most immature people. Uh, and then he really grows to, uh, to be more selfless and be much more of a loyal um, component of the team. Um, and is definitely is there for people and people need to have someone to be there for them. Um, and, and so I think, you, I think you see him mature the most throughout the show as a, as a person. Um, and he never, he never fully loses that, that Lancey Lance-ness, the, the goofiness. He's still adorable, you know? Um, but I think he definitely grows the most and he gets to take on a lot more responsibility. So it's, it's fun to play that as an actor, too. Can I have a high five? Yes, you can. That's fine. That's acceptable. <laughs> Hundred percent. Yo, 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 what's going on? Hi, I'm doing all your work. Oh, okay. stop um, it. <laughs> um, I would love to know what your best and worst pick of lines are. Uh, like me as a person or like on the show? Me both. Me both. Me both. Me both. I'm not that, uh, I'm not that good at that in, uh, in real life. Although I guess that kind of works because Lance really isn't either, he just tries to be. But he does have much more creative pickup lines. I think uh, one of my favorites is definitely um, the girl you already activated my particle there. Uh, which is really, really great. Uh, and then there's and then there's the, the stupider ones that are like really so I love the one where he's like, hey wanna watch me climb up this tree? <laughs> it's just like there, there's so many Good little nuggets that are just so uh, they're pointless, but they're great. That's what, that's what I love about him. He just says like really stupid things sometimes. That's what's fun. Uh, yeah, in real life, I don't. I, I, I'm not one that I remember that's been any good. I've never been able to achieve anything through pickup lines, other than maybe getting someone a good laugh. Uh, you know, they didn't. They never worked legitimately. So. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> dad jokes. That's all I am. Dad jokes. I. Hello! Oh, great. Um, <laughs> um, no, not the great part. Um, <laughs> you good? Uh, if you could wake up in any of the paladin's bodies other than Lance's, mm. who would you want to wake up in? Um, not like, in the weird 
weird way, but like in a <laughs> no, I, 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 I didn't take it in a weird way. You, you could, but I did not. I tried not to. Uh, uh, I would probably want to be. Uh, I mean, Cher would be cool because I have like a cool robotic arm, and he's just like <laughs> Jack, you know. <laughs> He's just like a jack dude. Like, that's cool. He's taller than I am, too, which would also, I'd like to have a little like, extra height. Hey. So, probably, I guess Shiro. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe Hunk. I, do I get, like, their skills as well? Like, if I, if I chose Hunk, would I get his cooking abilities? Yes, it's his body. It might be, like, muscle memory. So. Maybe it is. Then, yeah, then I'll either Shiro or Hunk, I would probably go for them. <laughs> for those reasons. <laughs> Hi there. I have a bit of a weird, silly, but um, sad question. Um, Great. Let's say that there's a crossover with Voltron and the Avengers, and yeah. and Team Voltron yes. had to fight Thanos. Yeah. And they would have won. And there wouldn't have been no finger snap had Voltron. Been. I'll tell you that much. Finger snap. Let's say there is a finger snap. <laughs> Who of this team do you think would just whisk away? <laughs> Great question. Great question. Um, I think that uh, I think first off, the first person to whisk away would be Hunk. Uh, and then I think uh, the the next person. Well, then it would then it would uh, then it would probably be Cran. I think. Thank you. Hunk and Cran. And then I think. Oh, just wait. It's worse. <laughs> Because you know everything is balanced, it's gotta be half and half. Um, and then it would be, I think, and then it would probably be Pidge. And then, and then it would, and then it would flash to the remaining four. And then there'd probably be like, you know, that second of like, oh, you think it's gonna be this person? And you're like, it pans like Keith. And you're like, oh, it's gonna be Keith. But then no, no, it's Lance. Lance was like. Uh, probably Shiro, Keith, and Laura to uh, bring all back because that's the most some of the most heartbreaking ones I can think of, you know. And that's what they do in that movie, you know. All the people that you're like, oh, it's not gonna be. Oh my God, was that person? What the heck? You're like, oh, it's gonna be Tony. It's not Tony. No, Tony's still here. Oh no. no. Peter, no, no, no. Shiro, I don't want to go. It hurts. Each of the Paladins are surviving in a horror movie. In a horror movie? Yeah. Um, I think. Sh mm -hmm. I don't know. These are like both questions about them dying differently. Uh, I, uh, I think Lance would would be probably he. I think he'd be the character that like sticks through like quite a long time because he's funny. But he still he would still die though. Yeah. <laughs> so he would be one of the ones that that bites it towards the end in a, in a comical manner. And like no. Let me make some joke. Uh, <laughs> Shiro would probably Shiro would do one of two things. He would either be one of the first to go, so that there has that emotional aspect of it, or he'd be like the last one standing because you know he's probably the most capable. Uh, <laughs> the rest of them, I have I have no idea. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, they would all do they would all do good. They have fighting yeah. abilities, I think, so they would do better than the most of the random people in horror movies that have no idea what they're doing. Let's all split up. <laughs> Good, good ideas there, guys. You're welcome so much. What's up, Paige? Um, I have two questions that I yes. used on Vex in the film before. Oh, good. Um, so I, what's your favorite character besides from Lance? Besides from Lance, my favorite character would be... Oh, I, do, I do really enjoy all of them for different reasons, but uh, probably... Mm, Shiro's, Shiro's one of my favorite characters for sure, um, and then I will probably also, uh, probably also Cran. Cran, some love. He's one of my, he's one of my faves. Uh, but like he doesn't give that much love at times. Love Cran. And to not including any of Lance's lines, what's your favorite line from Voltron? 
Uh, not me playing Lance's line. What's my favorite line from Voltron? Uh, 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 oh, actually, uh, this, I mean, it has to be Lance, but it's not Lance's line. So there's like the episode where Lance is like, oh, can we do like a, we do, is there like a siren on this castle? And the grand's like, <laughs> like, oh, no, but, uh, and we can put the little record, you bring the siren and, and blend that out the universe. And Lance is like, all right, woo! And then Shira's just like, no, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Yes, you can. What up? Hi. Um, just to say you're my favorite Voltron character in Voltron. And my question is, out of all the animals you've met in Voltron, what would be your favorite one to have as a pet besides the lions? Ooh, good question. I like the question. Thank you. Um, besides the lions, um, maybe, oh, the Space Wolf. The space, wolf. The space Wolf for sure. A teleporting, like, wolf that's like a bodyguard that can just protect you is pretty freaking yeah. awesome. So, Space Wolf. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Cosmo. Hi, well, you just you popped out of nowhere? <laughs> No, I just like still can't believe I'm meeting you, so Aww. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But so in the rivalry between Lance and Keith that we know from the series premiere, which I've seen. Mm -hmm. Clearly. <laughs> so what caused them to be rivals? What caused them to be rivals? Yeah. Um, I think it was more of a one-sided rivalry, uh, particularly from Lance uh, rivaling Keith. Uh, I don't think Keith probably ever thought too much about that at all. Not really his personality. Um, it seemed Keith had more issues with, uh, with young Griffin back in the day uh, in flashbacks. It seemed like, uh, but I don't think Lance was ever fought. Uh, at, that, at that point in time, I think more of it was like Lance was like, you know. He was in the class. He uh, he basically only got even into the fighter class because Keith dropped out. He was like he was like the next best person below the people that actually got in. Oh, yeah. So you know, so I think because of that, there's a little bit of jealousy there maybe because he didn't get in. he wasn't like the first pick to be in that class of people basically, but he just barely got in because a better person uh, happened to drop out. It uh, was probably you know had like the best scores and stuff, and so I think it was I think it's because of that. Um, and then, you know, Lance kind of builds it up in his mind as, as being, like, you know, annoying with this person that, like, took his spot for a while. Um, and then, you know, yeah, I think, I think that's probably where it stems from. I think everyone has that. They never, they probably, they don't have good, I mean, they don't have similar personalities, too. So there's, like, a personality conflict. That's probably why. Yeah, also another question. If, so, if you or Lance were to wake up and, like, like, sorry, no, not wake up, but to pilot any line except the uh -huh. blue or red, which would you choose? Black on <laughs> Thank you. Right, high five. Yes, high five. Woo! Hello. Nice to keep cosplay. That's good. Thank you. I don't have a very in-depth question. That's okay. But That's fine. Obviously, like hip hop, anything. If he was to take That's any hard. other character's style, mm. who's would he? Uh, probably. I think you could rock, uh, rock low towards style. <laughs> you could grow out that long, luscious locks of hair. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and then rock the kind of uh, the dark colored, uh, mysterious Altaian Gallradish suit. So, uh, yeah, let's go with that. You look good in that. I've also seen like mock ups that fans do of like uh, Lance and like Altaian clothing and stuff with the markings. I think that'd be pretty cool too. Yeah. Ah, he's like more yeah, you would. You would like, you would. <laughs> yes, you can. 
Yeah. What's up, dude? Yeah. Yeah. You brought your drink with you, man. You're just like all good to go. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, big fan of Adventure Time and Voltron. Both your characters in that, my face, so much love. Uh, two, uh, two quick questions for you. Um, in, in Voltron, is some of the more comical lines for Yes. Life. Have you ever had to ad lib? Um, I've never, like, had to, but I have. Um, just here, here and there, if there's like, you know, the good thing is, I think when you're doing uh, improv stuff and shows, I mean, most of the stuff is, is going to be just what's written on the, uh, what's written on the page is pretty much what you're here. Um, the people that usually get a little bit more, I guess, ad living out of the cast is going to be people who have more comedic lines, because if you're one of the more serious characters, the lines that are written for you are, are going to be more expositional or more like important at times, like specifically what's being said. Uh, and so you can't really get away from just saying what's on the page there. But if you're one of the more comedic characters, your uh, your lines are. I mean, you'll have those like comedic lines, which are just like a punchline to a joke, essentially, um, or just funny. And so if you can find another funny response to fill that kind of thing with, you can do that. Uh, but it, I don't usually have to because what they write is usually pretty great, um, obviously. Uh, so sometimes, you know, and sometimes we might play around for like a little bit, um, and we'll also like we can we will rework uh, lines a little bit at times to make it sound more natural or just make it flow better. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think I think specifically on this show, Ultron, they're uh, they're more open with that than other shows I've been on for sure. Um, I know like Coran plays Reeds has done has definitely improv uh, lines in the show for sure. Um, I think the whole he like the whole finger counting. He was like riffing on that quite a bit. So that was not what was on page fully. Yeah. The the I think yeah I think when he's like oh it's, I think right more of an art than a, than a science. Uh, I think is uh, I think that even that specific part was not on the page. That was more just like Reese kind of. <laughs> That's great. Just messing around. So there will be a little bit of that. Uh, and then you know when we're doing like ADR and we're adding additional recording aspects of the animated to like the action beats and that type of stuff, that's kind of all just us seeing what's on the thing and just throwing in whatever we, you know, whatever we want. So whatever, whenever your character has like an open mouth, uh, like is oh, adding something or like a oh type of sounds or something. Or if there's like a screen, you're gonna add in that. Or if there's like a really weird expression, you get to kind of have freedom to go ham with whatever, Weird noise you want to you want to make and stuff. So yeah, they're they're open for that if, as long as it works in the context of what's happening. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, second question. Uh, I asked that, so now I've got to ask you. If cavemen and astronauts <laughs> got into a fight, who would win? Uh, astronauts? The astronauts. Oh, uh, oh, defend. Oh, that's that's I mean, I would say yeah, I would say I mean astronauts. I mean clearly they're probably more intelligent. I would assume if they're astronauts, they probably have more technology. Technology usually helps in, uh, in conflict, and the caveman will be probably a little more, I guess, like, aggro and more uh, savage, but I think the astronauts are probably trained for that sort of thing. You know, they're trained to uh, come across, uh, you know, other life forms, I guess. Or two so, years of caveman fighting, at least, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They're trained for it. Okay, all right, good answer. Chris, Thank you. Yes, sir, of course. Woo! The crispiest. <laughs> Hello! How are you? I'm good. Um, my question is, if Lance had to be in any other universe, which universe would he perfectly fit in? Any other universe? Uh, I think Lance would do uh, would do pretty well in. Uh, I think he'd do pretty well in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd do there. Yeah, yeah. He'd do good in the Star Wars universe. I just have one more second. Sure. Um, what, sorry, um, I'm sort of like going through this uh, path I'm ho and I'm hoping to do voice acting when I'm uh -huh. older and I'm just wondering uh, what took you so, sorry, not so long um, <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did that, how did that get into it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so for me, I, I started acting when I was about five or six years old. Uh, I live in LA. And I, um, when I first started, I didn't start in uh, animation and voiceover. I got my start in <clears throat> on camera stuff, just a bit. Uh, but it was, you know, like commercials and like little small, like in a co-star kind of bit parts on little shows stuff when I was in, when I was a wee lad. Um, <laughs> and then the agency I was with had a voiceover department. So I, you know, after knocking on their door for a while, uh, and they started sending me out on uh, like radio commercials and stuff like that. And I just kind of worked my way up. Um, 
It's a transition, though. I mean, I've been doing it for a very long time, so now it's just been, you know, it's been 15, 16 years just working my way steadily up the ladder. Um, and putting put the work in to, uh, to hone my craft. But when you're a little kid, uh, everything comes more naturally to you. So when you're young, it's less about, like, being someone different or being this, like, character. When you're, when you're a kid, it's, like, natural reacting, you know? So when you're a kid, you're, you're just kind of doing what you, you're, I don't know, what's the word? You're more imaginative, I guess. Uh, and so you're just trying to kind of be natural on screen. Usually kids are very natural at that, and then they hit a certain point where they're like, I don't know, 12 or something, you become a little more self-conscious, um, and you'll see people get more awkward on screen. They'll start being too, too self-conscious of their hands or just like their everything. Um, and then they start watching themselves too much and go bad. So I think the making the transition from being like a, acting as a kid to being just an actor uh, as a career later is, is a hard one for some people, but it really just comes with being comfortable and then taking it from being something that you kind of did like for fun, you loved doing as a kid, and making it into a career and continually loving it. Um, but that was that was that was me. So that was my long way into it. just a lot of a lot of years, just auditioning, 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 and uh, you know you get told no about a thousand times until you get told yes. So uh, it's it takes thick skin. Yes, you can. Of course. Okay. We got about eight minutes left, guys. Just all right, yeah. speed round, Next. fire through these. I don't know if I can get all this, uh, all this line. I'm gonna try my hardest. Uh, hi. Hello. I have two questions. Yes. The first one is actually, let's let it. Can we do it to yeah. one per person so that more people can just get the questions? Is that okay? What would Lance's favorite musical be? Lance's favorite musical? Oh, great question. Um, I think his favorite musical would probably be one well, that has lots of singing and dancing. Uh, what's, what's a good uh, singing and dancing musical? Someone call something out, please. High School Musical! No! No! Not High School Musical! No! Wicked! There's a good one. He would do, he would like Wicked, oh. I think. Or Sound of Sound Music is great too. So Wicked or Sound of Music, let's go with that. You're welcome. Thank you. Other people, go Come on in, come on in. Go, 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 go. Good to see you again. Um, so what, who is your favorite antagonist in Voltron? Favorite antagonist in Voltron? My favorite antagonist is Lotor, for sure. Uh, I, I mean, Zarkon's obviously awesome too, but for me, my favorite part about Lotor is just the levels that he has and the, going through the series, uh, there's times when you're like, oh, maybe he's not bad, you, you can, you know, he has levels to him, but he's, he's, sometimes he's doing things that don't seem necessarily evil, but there's a lot more behind the, behind the head, behind the eyes, that uh, he has some, you know, he has that kind of the ends just, uh, sorry, <clears throat> got that wrong. Yeah, the, yeah, the ends justify the means type mentality of like, even though I'm doing something terrible, it's for the great good. So in his mind, he's not the villain, which is always an interesting thing for a villain. Um, and so, also the, uh, AJ that does uh, the doing voice is an awesome job. So, let's try favorite. Yeah. Uh, Uh, his favorite song to sing would be Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get my cup? Yeah, high five. Yeah, high five. We'll be popular for time. Thank you. You're amazing. Come on, Kate. Go. Great cosplay. Great yeah, cosplay. Very good. So I have a question that I really heard. Yes. So I have written down. Okay, go for it. So, okay. What do you think Lance uh, wants in his partner? But also, what do you think mm -hmm. he needs? Once it needs, good question. Does he know what he wants? I really what he needs. I don't know if he knows what he wants. I mean, uh, that's yeah, that's kind of hard to say. I guess I don't. I don't know if that's clear by how he goes about things. I, I don't know. Um, I think he needs someone that's uh, is probably someone that's strong, someone that's supportive. Um, I think Lance is, is goofy enough for, for two people, uh, so I don't think he needs someone that's, uh, that's comical by any way, shape, or form. I think he feels that perfectly himself. Um, I think someone who's probably a little bit more level-headed um, and is in, in that way and is just a, is a strong, supporting type of person, but yeah. It makes sense, it does. Thank you, don't worry. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. Um, I want to ask, at the Garrison, was Lance, what was Lance? Like, was he popular? Was he a nerd? How was he? He was not a nerd. Pitch <laughs> <laughs> was a nerd. Lance is not. Uh, I don't know if... 
I think, I mean, clearly some people liked him. I think him and Hunk were, were, were kind of bros, you know? I think there were people that weren't, they weren't popular, they weren't unpopular, they are just kind of, they were the, the, the majority of people, which is like the normal, uh, just kind of gets the mid-level, you know? Like people knew they were, people liked them, some people didn't. Um, I think Lance probably tried to be cooler than he actually was, which maybe made some people not like him. Uh, I think Hunk was probably close enough with him that even in his annoyingness, Hunk is a firm friend and would stick with him, you know. I think I think everyone has a friend like that that will do kind of dopey dumb things at times, but you're like, it's that, it's, it's Lance, you know. It's, you, you love him because of it. Uh, and they give your life a little bit of fun and excitement. Um, so, probably not the most popular, but, uh, you know, it was, yeah. He probably annoyed some people, but he wasn't a nerd. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, Yes, yeah, of course. Thank you, Connor. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, um, I drink this for you. You drink? Oh, thank you so much. I love it. For years. <laughs> <laughs> so I got there to ask this. What would Lance's favorite vine be? Yeah. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. I never had a vine, uh, and so I don't even I don't even know. It's better that way. Yeah, probably. I think I think, I, I think I'm okay. I'm not doing that. I mean, what's what's your favorite vine? What's a popular one? Oh, what do you, what do you I think? don't know. Uh, Sarah, help me out. What's <laughs> oh, I want to see violets. <laughs> Sarah comes in with a cat and she's like, I want to see my little boy. And then comes in with a cat. I think Lance is like that one. Yeah, because it's a cat. You love mine. So that one. Sure. That was really great. That's so funny. Yeah, of course. Of course I deserve it. Hello. Do you think Lance and Fidge would team up to make um, Ultron dab? <laughs> yes. Yes, they would. Yeah, Lance's bitch would be a Voltron dad. Would it be like an equal, like, would, would Lance have to force it? Or would it uh, I think Lance would have to do a little bit of forcing, or a little bit of the convincing. He's like, please, let me have this once! He's like, okay, and then you, dad. picture for you that we started at 2 in the morning, so I'll give you when we finish. Nice. <laughs> uh, my question is, uh, oh no, what was my question? Um, oh, what's your favorite interaction between Lance and any character that isn't from like the main Voltron cast? Yes, uh, one of my favorites is probably, oh, that's a lot. Um, I like, uh, I mean, all the Cult of stuff is, is, uh, is really great. Uh, that's always funny. But I like the I like the upper in the in the episode where they're like escaping from the thing, and he has to deal with uh, with that big guy. That's that's one of my favorites because he thinks he's doing the you know, he thinks he has the person, and it's totally just not the whole time. And he's like, oh, okay. Um, so. I don't know if I'll we'll ever get to sit in her in person, but can you tell Carolyn I love her? Sure. Those of you don't know, Carolyn's my girlfriend, but yeah. I will tell her that, thank you. Hi there. Okay. Um, so what do you think would be Lance's favorite dance move? Uh, I mean, the, besides the dab, uh, <laughs> clearly, clearly the best. Um, I think uh, the floss is a good one. <laughs> I can do a good floss. Um, there's, a little, there's a little move that I, that I like that I think he would also like. I can't see that, but I do like a little bit of that. <laughs> I call that the Jay Swizzle. That's, uh, that's Lance's favorite, for sure. Okay, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. This is a really quick one. That's going to be on the left. Uh, <laughs> no more. You know it will be. Okay, uh, Voltron and Adventure Time crossover, what would happen? Uh, I mean, Voltron would crash down and uh, destroy everything in their wake, but that's uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lance would have uh, definitely, I mean, he'd be like, oh my gosh, there's more princesses, but <laughs> then be like, yo, get away from them, dude. But uh, yeah, it, why do I, I keep, I keep playing characters that uh, have things for princesses, but <laughs> it's a recurring theme, I don't know why. I don't know why no, that Adventure is. Time was the first cartoon I actually ever got into, and now, like six, seven years later, Voltron's my favorite, so thank you. Thank so you, thank you so much. Yeah. Unfortunately, guys, that is all the time that we have. I'm so sorry. Can we give it up for Jeremy, please? <laughs>
I love your look for a cosplay. You look awesome. You look great. Thank you guys for coming out today, having some awesome questions. I love you guys. I'm actually asking you guys to hang out with me for like a second. I won't tell jokes. I can go second. I gotta, yeah, I gotta blitz out of here. I gotta go to photo ops, and then I might be signing for like until like 3.15, and then I've literally got to head out of here and go to the airport. So if you could somehow rush over from now then, go for it. But otherwise, thank you guys. It's been an awesome weekend. I love you. Thank you for watching the Convention Junkies coverage of Fan Expo Canada 2018. Join the conversation below with a comment, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more. If you would like to help us with future projects, please visit our Patreon page.